Welcome, welcome. I think you all can hear me. We'll find out. We see North Carolina, Wortham, Texas. I know where you are. Hi there. Florida, Missouri, two Missouris, close by. Colorado, Cincinnati, Dallas, Texas. Hi everyone, let me know you can hear. And y'all know this is all about you guys tonight, so hopefully you can hear. You know, I'm still such a newbie at this, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but uh, Hopefully you guys can hear me and see me. You know, these programs are not simple. They always talk about how simple they are, but they're not simple to me. Maybe I'm just too old to operate them. But I did get a new toy. Did you guys know that April is National Surger Month? It's National Surger Month. You are a small square. <laughs> I know I do not know how to get the square. Um, see what happens, watch when I make the square bigger, it goes fuzzy. I mean, it's fuzzy, the whole thing's fuzzy. So I don't really know how to fix it. You are tiny, <laughs> I know. I am tiny, but I don't know how to make it any difference. I wish I could do this to my body. Wouldn't this be a great diet if you could just, you know, put it on the screen and make it tiny? That would really work well. So as I go bigger, um, <laughs> it just gets really blurry. So we're just going to leave it this size because, other, you know, it just gets too blurry. But anyway, everybody's good. It's great to have you all here. Um, what I was saying is April is a national surgery month. So just FYI, surgeries are a really good price and they're on sale. Recenter the square. I do that, you guys, but it's still, it is recentered. See, it just gets, the bigger it gets, the blurrier it gets, even though it's recentered. Click on view. I did all that. I've actually been playing with it for an hour, and I don't know why, because it was set perfectly. And so for an hour, we've been, I've been trying to fix it, and I don't know what I'm doing. So, maybe we'll just full screen, it's on that. It's just a blurry mess. So, we'll just leave it. And, you know, I restarted my computer. Anyway, I've been working on this for an hour, so I've, I think I've decided to forget it. We'll just, you know, do with it. I know how to crop. I learned how to do that. See, I can take away that side. I learned how to do all kinds of things, except get rid of the blur i don't know how to get rid of the blur but anyway blurry better than tiny okay <laughs> i'll take that thanks you guys blurry better than tiny it's blurry even tiny so i'm fine with it as long as i can hear yeah i know i hear you you guys all right so um i was saying it's national surgery month so i i have a new cover stitch machine and i'm just so excited i've been playing with it and for the, I, there's a lot of you who have cover stitch machines, and I never really realized how many of you did. I didn't have one, so I just figured nobody had one. A lot, a lot of you have them. So that's great. They're great to play with. They're great to have a lot of fun with. They are really a lot of fun. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Oh, I love being here, you guys. I love chatting with you. You know, when I, I, I've opened the store, as you all know, Saturdays from 12 to 5. It's my, like, favorite time of the week. I just absolutely love, you know, just being there and everybody coming in. And it's just such a great community. It's so much fun. I wish some, you know, this is the only way I know how to do this uh, long distance. I don't know how to do it without a fabric store. But if you're in Dallas on Saturdays, any 12 to 5, you just have to come in because it's just such a fun group. I wasn't there last Saturday. Um, I was out of town, but I called to make sure everybody, everything was okay and going all right. And, you know, I could hear everybody's voices on the phone. It was just so much fun. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's great to visit with you all. You, we're all like-minded. We're very much alike. So it's fun to kind of 
get together. And I know I am blurry tonight. I don't know how to adjust it. I don't know how to fix it. I'm stuck. So we're just going to be a little blurry. That's all. Sorry, you guys. I even put makeup on tonight. So if I'd have known I was going to be blurry, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Hello, hello. What questions do you have? Let me know what questions you have. We have our new sleeves and armholes. Isn't that exciting? It's not blurry. Look, I wonder, maybe I'm too far from the camera. I don't know, you guys. Like I said, I've been working on this for an hour, so I think I've just given up. Our tech guy will fix it by next week. I made 322 Veronica's three-way raglan and can't get the neckband to lay flat. So, yes, um, you need to, it's it probably, I'm going to guess, you're using a one-way stretch. So, if you have problems with neckbands, typically the one-way stretch neckband will give you, the one-way stretch fabric will give you a hard time, where a two-way stretch will not. So, um, what that means is if you're using, and that's kind of why I did those neckband templates, not that you have to buy them. But basically what you need is you need to shorten the neckband. So if it won't lay flat and the size that you cut according to the pattern, it's because you can't make one pattern for all stretch of knits. So if it won't lay flat, it means it needs more stretch, so it needs to be shorter. So just go in, you know, baste it in the beginning. Whenever I do like a neck edge, this is 101 and it's a two-way stretch, so you don't have to worry about it. But if you're doing a, a neckband that's fairly close to the neck and it's a one-way stretch, you're probably going to have to do a little trial and error. So um, baste it on to make sure it's right before you surge it in place because there's some manipulation that sometimes has to take place. It's actually very normal, uh, but I know it's not fun. Don't get me wrong. I get that it's not fun. But if you'll just um, shorten the the total neckband, it, it will lay flat, should be without a problem. Um, I really want to take a field trip to Dallas. Yes, by all means, we're here Saturdays. Make sure you're there Saturday 12 to 5 and just come in and play. The store is stuffed with fabric. I mean, there's just, we've got another shipment coming in tomorrow. <laughs> the store is stuffed with fabric. There's just so much fabric. It's so much fun. It really is. I hope to get to Dallas one day to shop in your fabric store. But thanks for the periodic live sales. It's a good option. It is a nice option. It is. It is. And in fact, today's the last day we're going to take all those fabrics down tonight. Those new fabrics that we put up from the fabric sale, they'll go down tonight. But it is a fun option. I mean, I, I like doing them. And it's, it's nice to be able to show you kind of a collection of fabrics. So just FYI, though, they'll, get, they'll go down. They'll come down in the morning. I mean, they'll be up tonight, but they'll come down. The pattern ALC's pant with a split at the bottom, can those be made with a firm and not too stretchy punta. Yes, yes, they can be. You have said poly and lycra burn differently, so you can tell them apart with burn tests. Please describe the difference in the burn. Um, a poly will melt, but lycra will drip. Lycra is um, a little more dangerous than poly. Is that a fair statement? Lycra will actually, and lycra has a different smell to it than poly. And well, they both have black smoke, uh, but the lycra will actually drip. I think that's the main difference. Poly will just ball up. Okay. Um, I have folds that start in the back from the armhole to upper back. I have made the sloping shoulder adjustment, but still have too much fabric in those areas. Okay, so... Um, love your fabrics. Thank you, Dorothy. I do too. I, of course, I buy them all, but I love our fabrics. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about diagonal folds because I can tell you the answer, but you're going to have to diagnose it. But by the way, we are doing a new class. It's going to upcome. Um, and I'm very excited about this class, um, LCD. All right, let's answer this question. Um, the armhole to the upper back. If the diagonal fold, and just kind of make sure you understand this logically. If the diagonal fold is going from the bottom of the armhole to the back, that is the shoulder seam. Or it could be rounded back. So 
It can be either one of those two issues. So, and you're working on the back of you, so that makes it hard. But get a mirror, and even if you've made that sloping shoulder adjustment, the sloping shoulder adjustment isn't enough. Okay, so I'm going to demo on myself. If I've got wrinkles here, and I know you can't see because it's blurry, and I pick up the shoulder seam, it's going to take away those wrinkles. So if you have wrinkles and you've made a... a a sloping shoulder, by sloping shoulder I mean you've taken away more at the shoulder and nothing at the neckline, then you just have to do it more because the wrinkle is telling you that it's not enough. I mean that's just it, that's just simple. It, even if you've made an adjustment and you still have the wrinkle, it's telling you that the adjustment that you've made is not enough. Okay? And, tell, and argue with me on that just to see what you say. Do you have a pant pattern that goes down straight from the hip? but still is a slim leg? Um, yes, but are you talking knit or woven? If you tell me knit or woven, then I can I can differentiate, but the woven would be 3,200. It was a straight leg. Uh, the knit would be 3,418. 3,418, either one. Hey, Randy. Let's see, I bought 6236 Italian black sunflower woven and it's quite see-through. It's see-through? No, it's not see-through. Suggestions to make it more opaque. Oh no, don't do that. Just put it on your put it next to your body. I mean, I guess I shouldn't tell you what to do. Sorry. I love that fabric. It's so lightweight. It's got such great drape. It's actually um somebody sent me an email. I thought it was pretty funny. It's actually not sunflowers, they're daisies. <laughs> they are daisies. The difference, the sunflower has a bigger middle. They are actually daisies. But anyway, that was just funny to me. I got a good laugh out of that. Um, but to make a more opaque, yeah, it would be okay to use fusible interfacing. It would be. Um, if you're making, are you making pants out of them? I would, I, you know, you've got your body behind it. It's not like it's a skirt. I mean, if you want to make a more opaque, yes, use the fusible. I just love it the way it is. I think it's really cute. Okay, the woven, yeah, if you're making the woven pants to connect all these people here, it would be 3,200. 3,200 is a straight leg. Now, it doesn't mean that you, you will like the size of the leg it is, um, but if you measure some pants that you wear that you like and get an idea as to what circumference you like at the thigh and then go from one size to another. So that you get the leg size that you like. Um, that is all styling and you may not like my styling so I would go ahead and um, practice on measuring something that you wear that you like. Thank you so much for helping me to understand fit. Of course that's what I'm here for. You know what the number one reason why women stop sewing is fit and that just infuriates me because I, it's it's really simple. The problem is, is we have so much bad information that takes you to first base, to second base, to third base. Like, it, it's just not accurate information because you don't know enough about it. You just go that direction and then you think, well, they know it. And how come I can't do it? So it's always been very, very sad to me. And very it makes me angry that we make it so complicated and that we just don't keep it simple. And so sometimes because we have all that information in our head, even when we hear the simple, we can't seem to make it simple. So my goal is to make it really easy for you and really help you understand. Um, loving the stylist class. Thank you for all the work you have done putting these classes together. Thank you, Denise. I love that class. I have had more fun doing that class, the stylist class. And for those of you who are not in it, it goes till, I think it goes till the end of July. There's still plenty of time. You can join into that class. I think it's just a really critical class, and honestly, I, you know, we, we do put a lot of time, I do put a lot of time into those classes, and I cannot do them for free. Man, I would love to do them for free. I, I really would, because I think the information, especially this last class that's coming up in the next couple weeks, to me, it's kind of details, and it's just so many important details that we all need to know. We just, it, it's just so helpful. So. I've really had fun doing it. I've done it along with you. My closet has never been cleaner. <laughs> it's so nice. It's so nice to walk in there. I will not allow it to get stuffy again. 
So I appreciate that feedback. But I, I, I too, I'm, I'm loving the class, so thank you. I used a pattern today with the newer tissue. I really do like it. Thank you for working through the changes for us. That was a big one. That was a big challenge. So I do really appreciate that you say that, that you do like that tissue. I do like it. It's, it's light, but yet it's not, it's, it doesn't rip as easily as the older, that old or tissue does, or, you know, the tissue that all the patterns are done with the McCall's and Simplicity print off of. But, um, it, that was a nightmare. Honestly, when I think back, I don't know how we made it through, but we did. That's the most important thing. And I'm just too stubborn for my own good. And, um, you know, we made it through. We do have that, that blank tissue for those of you who like the tissue and, and, you know, you want a little heavier tissue. It's good for tracing and, and doing that. So good. I'm glad you like it. I do appreciate that feedback. Um, I have a 44 bust, 43 waist, 45 hips. How do I handle adjusting my patterns for my supersized waist? Supersized? It's not supersized. It's just you're a straighter body type. So when you're a straighter body type, um, you're just going to get into the styles class, you guys. That's what, I mean, that's what we've done the whole time is talk about body types. That's exactly what we've done. How to um, camouflage yourself and make you look what you like you want to look and with a straighter body there's some great concepts that are very easy to implement into your wardrobe and once you implement them and you have a wardrobe full of them then you just pick and choose whatever you want and everything you're choosing looks great on you so for all the different body types we first identified the body type then I gave um, you know concepts of looks that would look good on you dressy casual you know, business, all the different places you go, and then you can just duplicate them with different fabrics. You guys know I'm a big believer of um, a cluster of patterns, but yet all the different fabrics, you can make up the same top over and over, and that's what I do repeatedly for you, is to show you those things. Um, the newer tissue gives me less allergy issues than the old. Oh, that's interesting. That is interesting. Probably because it's a, a finer, it's, a, it's very much a finer, um, what do I want to say? It's a, it, it's a more, if we're talking fibers, just, I know it's paper, but it's a much um, more densely pressed paper. And so it, it bends easily, but it doesn't wrinkle and it doesn't tear if you notice. I, I like it much better. Uh, does the pants fitting class cover woven pants? Yes. Yes. Please get into the pants fitting class. And then I, can help you more you know it's so much easier to help you when you're in some of these classes it, it really is just because time is limited the stylist class is great i'm even going to try a full skirt even one with a yoke so the fullness doesn't start on my waistline good girl good girl i have definitely you know um i i know this sounds crazy but i think we all get into like little habits and i'm no different you know i i just um find something that works and I have a tendency to repeat that but I have tried some new styles and I really really like them and it's it's been really fun so this Tuesday night we've got a webcast that we're doing just spring clothing on and I, I you know I've tried some different things and I I'm anxious to show them off because I really really like them and I'm you know I think it's fun. I think it's fun to do new things and to do different things things we haven't done in the past or I know, little, little differences. It, it, you know, I think that what we all have to remember as we've been through COVID and we've been isolated in those areas, what is exhilarating or what is enlightening or uplifting is new. New is, um, new gives us, in, uh, gives us hope, you know, which is what spring is all about. Even though it's the same tree, it's been there for a long time. It's got new leaves, and it's it's just new. And, and what we do is we find that to be exciting. So I think it's really important to um, to have new and to, to constantly have new. You can say, I don't need a lot, but yet it's better to have, um, to clean out more often then, to bring in new and to get rid of the older. And with every time we do that, our closet gets better and better and better because our taste gets better. We practice better. We sew better. All of those things. Um, the pattern size for my waist is what I don't know how to choose and alter. Do I blend between sizes? 
um, you know, give me an example of what you're doing. You shouldn't really be choosing anything by your waist size. Um, so the waist is not really, um, you don't really, except for this class where, you know, I, if, if you're in the stylist class and I had you measure your waist, um, that was just for body type identification. But as far as pattern selection, when I'm doing the top, I'm using my bust. When I'm doing a bottom, I'm using my hip. The only time I would do waist is if you're making a skirt, but even if you're making a skirt, you're going to use your hip and your waist. You're going to use both. So I don't know why that waist would be a bother to you. Now, if you're making a top and it's fairly fitted and you've chosen it by your waist, by your bust size, which is how you should choose a pattern, you should choose a pattern by full bust. Um, then you could just, if the, pa if the waist measurement on the pattern is smaller than what you are, then you can just go out to the next size or just look and see what size waist is your size and just blend down from the bust to the size of the waist you are. But generally, we're not choosing a, a pattern by our waist size. If your waist is thicker and you're a little nervous that the pattern has more curve to it, just go from bust to the larger size as you go from bust to waist, okay? When I use my bust, the waist is too tight. Yeah, so don't just, again, find the waist size, you know, choose the size by the bust, and then find the waist size that you, and then cut from the bust to the waist size. It, it's really no different than when I'm cutting from my hip size to my leg size. And I showed you a few weeks ago how to go from the hip to a, a smaller leg. You're going to do the same thing. Just cross the lines. Remember that the lines are there to be crossed. Um, you know, not one size, you know, that's the beauty of sewing. If you join the stylus class now, are you able to view the previous lessons? Of course, of course, yeah. What you'll, if you sign up for the stylus class tomorrow or tonight or whatever, you know, what we'll do is we'll send you the links to, you know, we'll send you the emails that we sent out to link one, class one, class two, class three. The classes are all up until the end of, um, I think it's July, so there was, it didn't really matter when people signed up. It is easier for us to send it out all together. It's definitely more work, but this class, I just really feel like this class, and the reason I did it, it's so good for, for all of us. Um, I really think it helps put a lot of pieces together, so I, I, I don't care if we have to do more work. Get into the class, okay? Um, you have reminded me how shopping at higher end stores can inspire me to sew again. I shopped when I went on vacation and got some great inspiration. I, I'm no question, you guys. I, I mean, I, I know higher end inspires me. The details, the, you know, I mean, I, I love to shop, but it's not that I love to shop. You know, I had a, um, let me just tell you this. I had a, a meeting with um, the curator up at University of Texas. I know I've been talking about this because this is what our PBS series is on. And she is a curator for the, the Newman Marcus collection of, of clothing. This collection has over 20,000 20, pieces. It is the world's second largest fashion collection. And anyway, and you know, we're gonna take some of those pieces and we're gonna bring them onto the show. But what I love about her is um, I asked her, I said, how do, you, how, what, how do you see this? What do you, and I don't want to spoil anything for you for the PBS show, but she said, what I love about fashion is it is an, a, an accessible way for everyone to access art because fashion is art. Even whatever level you wear it at, fashion is art. And once you get comfortable with fashion, and if we can get people comfortable with fashion, then they're more likely to move on and go to art. And art, of course, is the inspiration for all things good in the world because it's our uh, right brain. It's, it's the side of our brains we don't use as often, and it's, it's a really positive thing. So I loved how the concept of, you know, a lot of us say, well, what, why is clothing even important? Why does it matter? You know, all of those things. And I loved hearing what she felt like because it, it was not just about the clothing, because we have to dress every day. Everybody deals with fashion. Everybody deals with clothing. 
even if they put on a pair of overalls, they're still dealing with fashion. But the idea that this fashion and the concept of fashion really catapults us or, or pushes us into art and painting and museums and that other side of, I thought was really an interesting comment. So I kind of like that. Okay. Um, so keep shopping and keep going to those high-end stores, you guys. Take vacations to do that. I think it's really important. Um, what about the dresses? Do you choose the bust and draw the line to the size that fit the waist? Yes, you always choose a dress by the bust. Always. Always. I shouldn't say always, but you know, most of the time, yes. And then just go straight down. Rather than going in, just go straight down or go out if you need to. If your body can do it, the fabric can do it. So all you have to do is think about what's your body doing, how is it changing, how is it progressing, and the body is always right, the pattern is wrong. If you choose a pan pattern by the hip and your waist is much bigger than the pattern size for that hip, do you print the French curve at the hip and grade out to the waist? Yeah. It's not even grading. It's not really that hard. You're just going to take the French curve and you're going to put it on the size that you choose for the hip and then just hold the bottom and pivot the French curve out to the size that fits your waist. I mean, it, I guess tech, it's not technically a grade, but I understand what you're saying. So yes, just put the French curve down on the size you choose, then pivot the French curve out to the waist size you need, and then um, you'll, you're good to go. Fashion is art. The Kansas City Museum has a pair of my 1970 jeans with art on them. <laughs> That's cool. Fashion is art. I still have my high school Calvin Kleins that um, you know I put on every once in a while to make sure I can still get in them. But high school Calvin Kleins, yeah, you know, it's funny because they're actually, when I do the math, they're actually like, you know, 50 years old. So to think that I have clothing that is 50 years old is almost inconceivable to me because I still remember how much I love them and how they're my favorites and how, you know, and I, I saw them in this collection in a, in a museum. So I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Some of our clothes are now in a... A museum is a collector's art, so it is kind of fun, and it is art, and especially when they uh, show off the history of our lives and the history of what fashion went through, and of course what we know, history repeats itself, fashion repeats itself, but it also has connotations of the time and the era and the things that we were doing, and um, I think I just, I just love it, and I just enjoy it, and, I, and mainly more than anything is... When I sew, I feel, I'm going to I hate to say this word, but I feel normal. I feel, when I go shopping, I recognize that I don't work into those clothes. <laughs> but when I sew, I forget all those weird things about myself because I, I can fix them. And so I love to sew. I, I can actually focus on the fabric and the beauty rather than what's wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> and when I shop, I'm constantly reminded of what's wrong with me. So maybe that's why I like it so much. But anyway, it is. It's just a lot of fun. And my job is to bring that joy to you. That's my job. It, it really is, um, you know, it's a privilege for me. So thank you all for being here. Um, and so, Betsy, you'll have to answer that question. What was the... No, I don't think des, Betsy had the design. I think the museum had the design is that did I understand that right but back in the 70s you know the Calvin Klein's and all that kind of stuff it was really uh florals a lot of florals were on jeans and those kind of things so we'll have to let you answer that you know our time goes so quickly here you know we we say 20 minutes it's been 30 minutes uh, but let me finish the answering this question and then we'll call it good for tonight um oh thank you Dorothy um, when using the neck templates, do you place the center front template on the center front of the t-shirt and pivot to a point on the shoulder line? Yes. Um, but having said that, there's an A and a B on the template. And depending on how wide your shoulder is, the A and the B have to go on the shoulder and the center front. So how they go out doesn't make a difference, but you have to keep in mind that there's a front and a back. And the shoulder, uh, the width of the shoulder seam has to stay the same. So wherever you're putting that shoulder point, 
on the front. You have to put the shoulder point on the back and then make sure that the point goes to center front. So those two points have to be connected, but that shoulder width has to be the same on that, okay? Sewing is my therapy. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just my love. I just, you know, and it's more about, it's just so not sewing. People will say to me all the time, what do you love about sewing? There's so many things. I mean, there's just so many things. It's not simply about the sewing. In the pants fitting class, will you show using the French curve for fitting? Yes. Yes. It's a very comprehensive class, and it's a very good class. And I'm here to answer questions. They literally have my jeans and were on display in 1993. They literally have your jeans? Like, they have your jeans? Like, I'm not giving mine up. I'm not giving mine away. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm in my closet still. Okay. All right, ladies. Listen, I, um, you know, I just think the world of all of you. Um, we will Tuesday night have a webcast, and I've got a lot of, you know, just spring fashion ideas for you with the fabrics that we've got. Watch tomorrow. We have a special little email coming along. If you're not on our email list, get on our email list. But anyway, so watch in your email tomorrow. We have kind of a little surprise coming. It's Easter weekend, Passover, the holidays, everything's kind of, you know, this big weekend, this weekend. Um, oh, they are in the archives. Oh, my. That was so nice of you to give up your jeans. I would not do it. You know, I'll, I'll maybe put them in my will, but I'm not going to do it while I'm alive. That was really nice. All of you ladies, thank you for being here, and we'll see you Tuesday night. All right? All right. Take care. Good point about making front and back shoulders the same length. Thank you, Martha. I'm giving it to you. Good girl. Let me know if you have questions. Take pictures if you have any questions. All right. Bye for now.